Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Sky Enterprise Lifecycle Management. I am Nick Norman, I'm a System Engineer and part of the Sky Enterprise team. Hope everyone is staying healthy. A little bit about our agenda for today, we're going to do an introduction to Sky Enterprise. We're going to go through populating your network devices in Sky Enterprise, uh, configuring Junos devices using the platform, as well as touching on some other areas, uh, mostly in the system and monitoring. Uh, going to do some uh, talk about software upgrades, show our new software upgrade feature, do some troubleshooting and, and monitoring of the device, and then um, getting support from JTAC and the Sky Enterprise team. What is uh, Juniper Sky Enterprise? Is cloud-based management delivered as a service? It supports both old legacy and and current model EXs, QFXs, VSRXs, SRXs, and NFXs. So things like EX forty two hundreds or the forty three hundreds, both those models. Uh, same thing on the SRX line, older SRX two hundred series, one hundred series, or the the current three hundred, three forty five, three eighties, uh, whatever whatever models you may have. Uh, provides centralized visibility, configuration, and control. Intuitive interface empowers all IT staff with my wife. Uh, Wi-Fi integration of MIST and also of the MPIM uh, card that you can put in the SRX, so it provides uh, configuration visibility of the MPIM slot. Multi-tenancy and role-based access is just included. One device, one license. A little bit about the device connectivity. It's very simple and reliable. The device itself provides an outbound connection. So if you're providing a service that sits behind some type of edge device, maybe there's a customer edge uh, firewall, something of that nature that doesn't allow you to get inbound access to your device, the de this device you know, makes the phone home to Sky Enterprise, and now you can configure, you can see, you know, see your configuration, make configuration changes, have backups of your configuration, all using Sky Enterprise, even Juno you know, CLI functionality via Sky Enterprise. The configure is unique per device. We provide double authentication via SSH and API, very reliable with automatic reconnections, and this this connection is secured uh, using outbound SSH. A couple of different ways to add your device. Uh, one is using cloud zero touch provisioning or cloud ZTP. Uh, definitely had you know lots of customers that have been able to reduce cost by purchasing a Sky Enterprise license because now they don't need to roll the truck to the site or deploy an on-prem engineer. They can have that engineer now working you know back in their operations center. Uh, via Sky Enterprise, rolling out mo many devices all, all at the same time versus tied up at one customer's site. So they can um, deploy that, that device right to the customer's prem. It makes a outbound SSL connection to um, the redirect server. We're registering that device as a Sky Enterprise device. It connects into Sky Enterprise and requests a configuration, which time it's authorized and pulls down that config. And then you'll see your device online in Sky Enterprise. This also works across the LTE interface. So if your SRX has the LTE interface, Cloud ZTP work will work with Sky Enterprise across that, as well as any of the physical ports. So you can plug in your Gig Ethernet Zero um, on the SRXs or any of the any of the ports on the EXs. Also works on the NFXs as well. As I mentioned, new Junos upgrade feature in Sky Enterprise where we are hosting the images in our platform. You can see in this screenshot here, and I'll go into it in the demo. Um, but we've we've got a device selected, and we can see the versions available that match that device. Also, can see the current version of code the device is running, so it's running 19 something there. It's cut off, um, and then we're we're saying 18.2 is the JTAG recommended or suggested um, version of code. We've also real time looked at the um, the amount of storage available on the on the device, and then there also also is some up, uh, advanced options we can pick as well. New feature here as well, real-time syslog viewer. So I think we've actually added another uh, like um, chassis D possibly. Um, I'll also touch on this in the in the live demo, but um, ability to open up a new window and see live logs um, in Sky Enterprise flowing uh, on uh, from your device. At the end of that time here, you're also able to stop, or um, at the end of the time, you're able to download those logs as well. Super helpful. And also, Sky Enterprise in your local language. So, ability to, to pick your drop down here in the, in, the, in the top right and select your local language. And now, time for the live demo. Okay. So, here we are in the Sky Enterprise. Uh, Main landing page there, home and sites. You can see I have, I have a bunch of sites. Got my nice uh, interactive map here. You know I can see, uh, you know this this radio button or or dial button at the top right here is telling me I have seven devices online and one device offline. 
I've got all green here, so my offline device is not allocated to a site. I can definitely add a new site here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and go through that. Let's add an Ohio site. So Ohio, and let's give it an address. So let's say uh, uh, Finley, Ohio, which is where I am. There we go. So now we've added a new site. You can see the new site comes in as gray versus these sites being green because I have devices allocated and they're up. They're online versus uh, offline sites. So easy way to tell, you know, right off the bat, if I have a problem, maybe a network device that's down, um, you know, I've got the red, look for the red, also no red in my sites. Maybe this is a new device I'm deploying, I haven't allocated to a site yet or something of that nature. And then I can also see my major and minor alarms across all my devices uh, connected to Sky Enterprise. As I mentioned, in, you know, interactive maps, so I can, I can pick a site here, like I just created the Ohio site. I get a little pop-up view of, of uh, devices and things connected at that site. Let's head on over to our devices tab. And we'll just want to go through adding a device here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, new new device. This is my SRX branch. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's branch uh, 10. And it's a firewall. And so you know, I mentioned in the slides, I can go through zero touch provisioning very simply here by clicking the box and giving a couple more options here for uh, serial number. And I can pick my template if I pick you know pick a basic template here. I've got my host name that I can just fill in. That that'll end up as configured on the device. So um, you know, key feature about Sky Enterprise is, is that we interact with the configuration that lives on the device. So we're always reading in that in that config in real time to to paint uh, the different web pages or create those different web pages uh, for the user as you navigate through the platform. So when I'm inputting variables like this, so I would put this host name and I would say maybe this is um, you know branch uh, branch 10, just like I do have up here. We would actually end up configuring this on the device itself. You can see here we're also adding the the Sky Enterprise connector as part of that process. So this this one I'm just going to do. Uh, uh, basic. I'm not going to go through ZTP right now. And then I've got the optional fields. We've got a bunch of other webinars as well for ZTP. We just did a ZTP masterclass uh, in the last um, session. So that's available out there um, for, for those that want to go into like a deep dive of, of, of creating configs and, and kind of testing configs on box, uh, interactive net comp sessions. It kind of gets way down in the weeds. But um, so here we can go through your optional fields as well. So this site, uh, I'm actually wanted to uh, put it into the Ohio site, and maybe I want to say that this is a, um, a firewall tag. Um, as you know, I can see other tags here like headquarters, HQ, example, edge, those types of things. So I'm going to say this is a firewall uh, tag, and maybe I'm going to say this is part of my branch, uh, my branch devices. All right. Want to enable config backups, syslog collection, A and R. Um, that is normally enabled by default, but for this tenant, it's turned off uh, globally. So I can turn that on. It's on by default. But So I'm going to go ahead and create this device. At this point, we're getting that unique configlet that uh, I kind of went through in the slides there. And then I can just copy and paste this onto my device. So I've got my, my device here. Drag over. Okay, I've copied that into my window. Jump into config mode. Go ahead and paste that in. Now this, this device, um, it may be Greenfield, brand new. Um, it may be Brownfield, where it has an existing config. You can see just by um, putting in uh, this configlet, the only thing I'm adding is, is these pluses, and, and I'm just adding enough info to uh, connect that device uh, to Sky Enterprise. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Um, yeah, so again, that could be a brownfield device, it could be a greenfield device, it doesn't, it doesn't matter from our perspective. Um, the device is, is just going to get that connector built, and it's going to connect up to SkyDeprise, and then it's going to be online in our platform uh, for users to configure, make changes, see the status of it, you know, alarms and those, all those events, get backup configs, all those things, uh, then will be available for us. <clears throat> okay, we'll um, get that a few minutes here, and um, see it come online. Refresh once, and then we'll go do some other things. Possibly, we'll see. Yeah, we're online already. Branch ten. There we go. And it, it'll pull in this information here. Um, I just probably caught it right as it was coming online. So <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about some of that information that we'll pull in. So here's another SRX 300, and if I go to device details, so here we can see host name, model name, IP address. It's uptime. Normal shutdown is the reason it rebooted. Also see the last time it connected, the categories of firewall, there's serial number of the device, and then I can see the software revision. When I hover here, it tells me that it's not running the recommended uh, uh, version of Junos. I can jump out to the upgrade um, 
if I wanted to, to install the recommended version of Junos. And I also have the ability, I have this download, uh, the backup config. I'm going to go ahead and download that here. And I'm going to click into this upgrade workflow, this upgrade easy button here. So this is our new Junos upgrade I showed in the screenshots. Um, so let's go ahead and pick uh, pick our device, maybe our maybe our um, branch device. There we go. I started to look for Ohio, but it's not named Ohio. So there's that branch device I just brought online. You can see here I've got uh, 1.12 gig available on on box, and then I'm running uh, as you can see in the in the drop down there. I'm running 18.4. And if I go look here, you'll notice that 18.4 is the recommended, but maybe I wanted to go down to 18.2. So that's available here in the platform. So I could pick that. It's going to tell me the image size is 300 megs, and I've got I've got 1.12 available. So now I could stage it, or I could do the upgrade. Uh, here I've got my advanced options, so I could request uh, system cleanup prior to doing this um, file copy. I could do a, a system reboot as part of the upgrade. I can also go through validation or no validation of the configuration. Um, so I could also stage it there. So maybe I wanted to um, push the package ahead of time and then later uh, run the upgrade. So kind of a nice thing about the stage is that if I, if I transfer the package ahead of time, if I come back later and do the upgrade, uh, the platform checks to see if this package is on box already. So it's not going to transfer it a second time. If it sees the package is there, it's going to run the MD5 checksum against it to just ensure that it's, uh, its integrity is good. And then we're going to run the upgrade um, at that point in time. And the device is going to go through its upgrades. You can he see here that uh, this is actually um, an upgrade I did a, a little while back, but uh, I can go ahead and look at this job. So here, you know, I, I, I did an upgrade of this device. I did the MD5 checksum automatically for me. Um, we, we have that, you know, because the package is in Sky Enterprise, we know the MD5 and we do the check against it. Here we're running the install. And then these are the logs coming back from the device. So you can see here, 18.4 uh, R3 was installed become active at next reboot and then I reboot it rebooted automatically for me uh, once the device came back up it reconnected to Sky Enterprise uh, and then I saw it online with a new with a new version of code super simple <clears throat> let's go back to this device here we go let's go to branch 02 so here we can see under system and environmentals CPU, memory, and temperature, you know, definitely, you know, good place to look to see if my device is running a high CPU. Here I can see my different security uh, sessions. Uh, great, great uh, information on knowing if I have the right size device for my location. So maybe my branch has grown. I've, I've doubled or tripled or quadrupled in size. And maybe I'm looking to, you know, do I need to replace this firewall? I can see the number of sessions that are flowing through the device as well as on the interface graphs page. I can see the, the, the amount of traffic maybe flowing through my WAN interface or something of that nature. If AppTrack is on, we can see that AppTrack data as well. This one does not have ANR reports enabled. And then the real-time log. So we talked about this in, this, in the slides there at the beginning. Uh, super easy way to come check your uh, live stream of those logs. Maybe I'm troubleshooting some type of issue and I want to have, have a view into those log files, right? Super helpful. So I can, I can start one of these here. So I get my pop-out box with the ability to uh, see those live logs flow in. So as, as we start to see commands, um, interactive commands ran, uh, we'll start to see those log file populated there. So super, super helpful. I can also uh, stop that and download then those that um, logs that came through as part of that session. You can see the different commits that are happening. Uh, looks like mostly uh, folks working at the CLI on that device. Uh, lots of troubleshooting going on, maybe, or testing going on, I should say. In our, in our config backups job, uh, it runs every hour automatically. If there's a change in the config, it keeps the new copy. If there's not a change, it, it uh, keeps the old copy. Um, and then this comparison is comparing a couple different, you know, pack, uh, config uh, backups that we've taken automatically. And I, I can see those red and blue, uh, green things that have changed over time. Also a view into the device licenses. So, you know, some of those functions that I, that I mentioned, uh, IDP, AV, uh, URL filtering, UTM, those those uh, are require additional licenses on the device, on the SRX side. So um, here we have a vis visibility into the license and when it's going to expire, and we're going to raise a, a warning within 90 days by default if that license is going to expire. want to make sure we get those uh, automatic updates keep coming in. 
Uh, here we have uh, device specific alarms. So an, uh, another great way to keep, you know, keep tabs on what's going on with the device. Uh, I can see that this device auto recovery information is not saved, so I can go through and, and save that. Also on the actions page, I have that ability to save that auto, auto recovery state here or delete the rescue config, which is already saved. Maybe I need to, uh, to delete that so I can, I can resave it. Um, renew the DHCP leases, show the full config. Uh, this is a kind of a nice one. If I was, um, maybe my backup had just ran, but I've made some changes since then and my automatic backup in Sky had just ran. But I want to see the, the full config for some reason. I can come out here and I can do show full, uh, full config. It's going to run that uh, in real time and go get the configuration uh, from the device at that moment. Also, the ability to reboot, halt the device. Update the root password. So if I needed to do some type of user uh, password rotation, I can come in here on a per device and update the root password and then request system storage cleanup. So we saw this also underneath the new Junos upgrade feature. Uh, so we have the ability you know, to use this as a standalone feature now if I wanted to, to clean up my uh, system storage. Uh, I have the ability to do that. Diagnostics, so I can I ping maybe an end user's PC, or in this instance, I'm going to ping, uh, ping 8888 just to show connectivity from the device. So I'm pinging from this firewall out to 8888, and it'll give me the results of that here in the, in the window. So five pings, all successful, no packet loss. You can see the round trip time and things. RPM probes, I don't know if I have any on this device. Yeah, there we go. So there's an RPM probe. And, you know, I can see that historical view of round trip time, jitter, and delay. Yep, yeah, there's some other probes down here going on. Good stuff. All right, on uh, back on the devices page. Go ahead and pull up uh, next to this device, device details. Something I wanted to point out here, though, was the alarm email address. Very important if I want to get you know notifications when the device disconnects from Sky Enterprise uh, and reconnects to Sky Enterprise, I would want to put in my email address. So nice thing is is that I can do a device-specific alarm email address. So just you know when this device goes offline, the, these are the users that are going to get emails. Versus globally, I can go under settings and I can set set it globally. So then you know these users here globally. Uh, the default alarm email address are going to get um, for all the devices versus a device specific alarm email address. Compare Confirm is on by default. We happen to have it off for this uh, tenant doing some testing here, but uh, uh, it's on at um, five minutes. But I can pick a you know pick a different timer or turn that back off. When I make changes in this section, I want to do an update here at the bottom. Uh, I can also you know this is on by default, but here's where I could turn that off. I can also uh, you know, use Radius for new devices. <clears throat> Got our missed integration, multi tenancy. I uh, talked about you know a little bit early on about getting support uh, from JTAC. So something I just want to point out here is that by checking this box, the JTAC engineers have the ability to see your devices now in Sky Enterprise. And they can help you make changes then. They can see your device uh, status and whatnot, uh, kind of walk you through, you know, what maybe help you need with a change or something of that nature. Uh, so very, very, very cool way in which um, you can give JTAC access to your device. You can also upload your own logos and things of that nature. Another, another great feature is the custom security feed. So we can add uh, custom security feeds so that, you know, maybe I have... DNS servers and things of that nature that I want all my devices to have. Uh, so um, I can create a new custom security feed here, and then my SRXs can subscribe to this feed, and then I'd have all of these uh, address, you know, this becomes an address book on all those devices that I can update in one place. A couple other things I think that are, are, are very helpful as far as lifecycle management goes is the ability to see my topology and run some tools. Um, you know, look up look up IP addresses, look up MAC addresses, the things of that nature. So, uh, you know, here I have the ability to come and look up an IP or a MAC address. It'll go across all my devices, querying either the uh, L3 or, or the L2 Ethernet switching or IP ARP tables, and it'll report back, uh, you know, the information that I've that I've asked it to go and fetch. So, you know, whatever IP I'm looking for, it'll go tell me what interfaces and things it sees those IPs and MAC addresses on. 
topology very very nice here where we build this automatically using LLDP so here we've got you know device so for instance uh, this EX new is a switch uh, that I have here in the platform so when I've selected it on the topology page now I can see I can see it and its connections I can see the interfaces here running LLDP and I also have the ability to then next to the device jump into its action menu so I was under system and monitoring earlier um, I can jump into system and monitoring right here from this device um, section. Actually, let's do that. Let's go to system monitoring on the EX. So there we are. We're into that. We're into that device. Uh, so jump. Once I've once I've uh, selected a device, it's at the top there. I can pick another section of the configuration to go look at. So again, um, I just want to point out that Sky Enterprise, in at this moment in time, when I've selected interfaces, it goes out and requests. Um, the configuration from the device and builds this page for me at that moment in time. So that's uh, Sky Enterprise works very well if customers have their own API tools that they're using to interact with the device still, or maybe another platform that they're using. Maybe maybe they still have some legacy platforms that they're going to use to manage the device, and they're migrating some of that functionality into Sky Enterprise. So we can work in that hybrid scenario, whether it's an you know whether you're migrating to Sky and, and that the old management platform goes away, or it's just something that you're going to keep going. Maybe there's some API stuff that you're going to do yourself. Um, that's absolutely fine. We work very well in those hybrid scenarios because we're always going and fetching that config in real time and building these pages. Uh, so that means you can still use the CLI uh, and make changes, and we're going to see those changes in Sky Enterprise next time you. So if I made a change to the interface description here, uh, the next time I um, I come here, we're going to see that. So uh, another great um, great feature uh, we have in 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 Sky, kind of uh, you know. The ability to bounce a to interface, right? So, uh, if you work in Junos, right, you configure and you you disable the interface and you commit that, and you roll it back and commit it again. Built that all into a button here. Um, you also, can do things like change the Ethernet switching from access to trunk very simply uh, just by editing the interface uh, and doing so. Also, all these uh, nice descriptions displaying those and see the status of the interfaces here on the right. If it's DHCP, we would see that um, that bubble populated as well. Also, can jump into other things like uh, VLAN. So, if I wanted to create a VLAN, um, voice VLAN, any of that, any of that information, you know, any of that type of VLANs I'd want to create, I can see the status of the current VLANs as well as create them. Interface ranges, aggregate, spanning tree. Let's go into that section here. So here we can see uh, that this device is not the root bridge of the network. I can see you know the different states of these devices, and there's my port, my uh, root port. So that's my path to the root bridge. Maybe I, I needed to make a change, so I could go in here and I could make a change to this uh, interface. I could disable spanning tree or change the cost or priority. Also globally, I can come in here and say I want to disable spanning tree uh, or change my bridge priority or even uh, change all my interfaces uh, here in one here in one location. So super uh, simple way. Um, also, I can go look at, you know, I showed IP searching and, and MAC searching, uh, but here I can go and I can look at those uh, Ethernet switching tables, and here's where, uh, you know, we're going out and fetching, fetching that information um, in real time, ARP table, and then the LODP neighbor table. So here, you know, I can see the, the, the data that we're using to build that topology page. I can see that on a per device basis as well. So again, we're, we're, we're about bringing more flexibility to users. Uh, so, you know, use that CLI. Here, here we're, we're, we're showing you the LDP table, and we're giving you a topology view of that from that data, right? So we're kind of, you know, being able to show that data specifically here for per device, as well as jump and see, you know, kind of a graphic way to see the network via LDP. Good stuff. Uh, we also have, you know, I mentioned earlier the MIST Wi-Fi integration. So here we can see the different clients that are connected. We've got a MIST AP. I can also get some details about this so I can see the different information about that access point, IP address, MAC address, serial number. I can also jump out to the MIST portal here, and then I can see those clients connected down below. And then we also have a global view of the MPIM. So here is a um, SRX with an MPIM Wi-Fi card installed in it. I have a client connected here at the bottom. Uh, I'm looking at the global page of Wi-Fi, meaning if I had multiple SRXs, I would see them uh, in my list, and I would see all the clients across all the SRXs in this in this uh, below view. So if I had you know several sites running the MPIM uh, Wi-Fi card, I could see all the clients connected at all the sites in one place, as well as integration with MIST, so I could see kind of both those environments all in one location. You also have the ability to edit the access point. Uh, information right here or I can click on this device and it'll take me to the device specific Wi-Fi so now I'm on that branch SRX with the MPIM card in it and I'm on the Wi-Fi tab 
So I can edit those radios. I can edit the parent AP. Also go in here and create a new virtual access point. So maybe we need to create a new some type of SSID, uh, bind it to the five gigahertz radio, and turn on you know WPA Enterprise. And and based on my selection here, I get kind of different drop downs depending on what I'm doing. And I can also go into some advanced uh, advanced settings here. So really awesome little MPIM card uh, that can go in those SRXs. So you know a branch in a box. We did a webinar here uh, a month or so, maybe two ago. Uh, kind of showing this MPIM card as well as the LTE card inside of a small SRX. So now you've got uh, maybe a broadband link and a 4G link and the Wi-Fi all in one little box. So um, also great as a little pop-up. You know, businesses doing pop-ups, maybe pop-up uh, testing sites, pop-up restaurant type of uh, things or pop-up retails. You know, a great little, uh, great little box and a great little way using Scanterprise to deploy it using cloud-based ETP as well as uh, ongoing uh, changes to the SSIDs or maybe I need to spin up a guest SSID or something of that nature here. Um, yeah, super, super simple and, and, uh, and a nice, uh, super flexible way to, um, to deploy as well as ongoing management of that device. So um, I, I showed downloading of that um, configuration earlier. Um, so I've got it up here. So here's my, uh, my configuration. I just want to talk through, you know, maybe I'm deploying um, a device because I had a device fail for some reason. Uh, so here I've got my config. I just, I just copied everything into my buffer. And um, I go through the cloud ZTP to add the device. And then at the moment, you know, I got the device online. I can come into my bulk update tool and say new. I can pick my device. So maybe that branch 10 is actually going to, you know, maybe that's a replacement for branch 10 that already failed. So I could bring that online with ZTP or just my, uh, my config like I did earlier. And then I can say Juno's config replace. And now I can paste in here that configuration. Um, from my backup. So this is, you know, maybe this is the device that failed. This is the config. So I brought my new device online and I'm going to push this job. So that'll put this config back on that device in whole, uh, replacing the config that's on the device. Uh, so very flexible way um, to, to bring a device back onto line uh, online if it's, if, it's, um, if it's failed for some reason. So I would want to turn off under settings uh, commit confirmed because my device is going to flip from that, uh, from that other device I just added to this new device unless I gave it the same name um, yeah so I so I would want to turn off commit confirmed in that in that type of manner so this that, that would allow me to have both devices or or um, you know another good use would be maybe I'm, I'm going from an older SRX 200 series to a 300 series right so I could definitely bring that 300 online I still have the 200 online I put the config on it and now I can take the 200 offline and I put the 300 in with the config that I've just pushed from um, from Scanterprise back to it um, so I was on the Juno's page earlier, software distribution, so the kind of older older method. And then uh, security policy templates, you know, great way to manage those um, templates over time. So here I can see devices that are bound to templates, and I can go into one of these templates here and make changes and then deploy that across all my devices. Also, I can run a compliance job to make sure that uh, my, de my device is in compliance. Um, with the template that I've created. So super awesome way to make sure that my devices are all running the same uh, same security policies, same address books, same zones. Slightly different than dynamic address books, but um, yeah, just as useful. Okay. Two more um, items here, and I think we'll go back to the finish off the slides, but um, definitely have, um, so I've got all my devices up here, and um, functionality of download is effectively, I get a CSV file. Um, it allows me to, to um, all the device information I showed on a per device basis, so the uptime, um, version of code. So every line here is a new device, so I could see the versions of code, the uptime, all that information, the recommended or suggested version versus rec uh, what the device is running, the IP addressing, licensing, whether backups enabled. Last time a backup um, was actually uh, fetched. Um, I should say the last time the backup was saved. So that would be the last time the config changed. The site name that it's in, all that information is all available in the CSV. And then on um, on our security policy page. Also have the ability to download these as well. So maybe I, um, maybe I, I have auditors or some type of um, some type of need to 
Um, download these. I'll click the download button. Very similar here. So I've got my address books and then all my policies from that device. So a super helpful way to keep track of those over time or just uh, in, my, in my, you know, whenever I need to do that for an auditor or something of that nature. Tons of other functionality in the platform, as you can see all these other uh, abilities to do NAT, VPN, IDP, UTM, applications, security feeds, uh, kind of covered those, DCP, all these other uh, sections you can jump into. And I mentioned earlier the Juno CLI, uh, the ability to um, get a CLI over that outbound SSH connection to the device. So, you know, kind of the, the model of that customer, um, if I can type, that customer behind another customer's firewall or something of that nature. Um, yeah, also be able to do um, copy and paste in and outside of this window. So just want to make that um, ability to get to that device in another way as simple as possible. All those, And I just want to say thank you for everyone for taking time away and hope everyone is staying healthy. Have a great day.